What's up, everybody? This is Brian. And I'm Logan. And this is Tops. Sup. And this is Bottoms. Sup. And this is Trouble. And sup. I'm a kettle. And oh, it's so spooky because I have no hat. Wow. Spooky. And we're Crush Cards. Hi, team. Happy Saturday, my phantom friends. Golly, we have phantom nights today for you because literally everyone and their mother, their dog, and their second cousin, Toys Removed, has been asking for us to update it. So here it is. Yesterday on the community page, we put up a poll asking which version of this deck you guys wanted to see, whether it was with or without Crossout. Crossout did win, so just a heads up that Crossout is in this deck. And we have built the deck accordingly to play around with Crossout and with the current metagame until Phoenix Enforcer comes out. But don't worry, my budget friends, we do have some budget alternatives out there for you. So just stick around and we'll let you know what they are. Also, just a heads up, this is our first profile on the channel with Crossout. So if things may look Whoa. a little wonky or feel a little weird, we're going to talk through it because uh, this is definitely going to change deck building for the foreseeable future. It's also our first deck profile for Bukio, the month of the year where we do all sorts of spooky, scary stuff. And what better way to start it out than with, you know, phantoms. Scary. As you guys know, this is one of our favorite decks to do on the channel. It's one of our favorite decks to play. So we're really excited to show this update with you guys. And if you like it, make sure you let us know why. And if you don't, tell us what you're playing. But before we get into this video, if you guys are not already a subscriber, feel free to go down, hit that subscribe button, throw this video a like. And comment your favorite spooky creature. It can be Ghost, it can be Bigfoot, or it can be Looming Student Loan Debt, which is mine. We also have an Instagram. It's at Crush Cards YGO. Feel free to come give us a follow. We're also doing a Mega Tin giveaway on Instagram right now. So make sure you come follow and follow the instructions because you could win. Megaton. We also have a super wholesome Discord community. It's absolutely bopping. Feel free to go hang out there. If you want to make some new Yu-Gi-Oh friends, hang out with me and, I don't know, have some good times. And then last but not least, if you want to further support the channel, we have a Patreon. Side decks will be up there like this one. We have the bloopers. We have a lot of amazing rewards. Feel free to check out all the tiers. But if not, that's okay. We're just happy you're here to get some Bukio content and see what has updated in Phantom Knights. Ooh, spooky. Boop! So starting off with the deck profile, obviously, it, I think it comes as no surprise that we are playing triple copies of Torn Scales. Uh, shout out to the Megatons because a lot of these cards just got reprinted. Torn Scales is the best normal summon of the deck next to Tour Guide. It honestly just depends on your hand, but Torn Scales is an activated effect to discard any card for cost. And you send one Phantom Knights card from your deck to the graveyard. It is also an amazing extender because whenever a Phantom Knights card in your graveyard is banished, this will special summon itself from the graveyard as well. It just banishes itself once it leaves the field, but like it's a starter, it's an extender. Like this card is absolutely incredible. Next up, we are playing triple copies of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. Once Boys. again, literally just like an extender. It Boots is with the fur. just special summons itself from the hand once you have a PK monster on the field. And then it also banishes to add any Phantom Knights spell or trap card from your deck to your hand as well. So free body, free search. This card's absolutely incredible. I cannot look at Boots without singing the song in my head. Shout out to Flo Rida. Thanks for that. Yeah, you had them apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur, with the fur. And next we are on double copies of our Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. Ancient Cloak is also just a really good card because this is one of the main targets that you're trying to Foolish Burial off of your Torn Scales because you can banish this card and then add one the Phantom Knights cards from your deck to your hand. And then also, I feel like we say this in every deck profile, but if this card is in attack position, you can target one dark monster on the field, change it to defense position, and then if you do, that monster gains 800 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. So really good boost, gives your monsters a little bit more attack and like, why would you not do this? It's just a free effect, makes your stuff harder to beat over and just a little bit more difficult for your opponent to out. And then last up for the PKs, we're on one copy of Ragged Gloves, and we are now officially playing one Woo! copy of Stained Greaves super again. Super Stained Greaves. shout out to the Super. I will say, this is one of the cards that we asked oh, for. I'm so happy. In an OTS pack, and I'm actually glad we got it in the Megatons as a Super Rare. This Thanks, card a 1,000% Konami. deserves it. Very happy. Now we have all hollow little spooky boys. Get it, Halloween? Oh my God, they're hollow Halloween. Wow, look at me. Pun counter, one. Ragged Gloves is literally just foolish barely you banish it and then our stained greaves over here is an incredible card because if a phantom knight sponsor is special summoned to your side of the field you can special summon this card from your hand or you can banish this card from your graveyard and special summon one phantom knight's monster from your hand as well so like either get something out of your hand or gets itself out of your hand so it's just a free body regardless i'm literally reading this card for the first time and i did not know that you could use each effect apparently you can use both i thought you could only use one so i guess that changes the way we play the deck from here on out wow amazing what happens when you read the cards you play shout out to everyone who doesn't read our cards. 
Love this community. As we stated earlier, we are obviously still playing triple copies of Tour Guide and the Tour Guide package. We are playing one copy of Libic, one copy of Graph, and then one copy of Seer. Shout out to the soon to be coming Burning Abyss lore that I'm gonna be doing on the channel. Ooh, we're gonna round out spooky season with the lore for BA. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe because we have a good time here and lore with Logan is coming back. Graph literally gets Seer out of the deck and then Seer just specials back Cherubini. And the reason we're playing Libic is because for some odd reason, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you shuffle you are always gonna open graph or seer and i just don't understand what the math is behind that or how it happens but like the luck of opening one of these two cards is unfreaking believable so we play libic because libic allows you to special them out of your hand so it literally just allows you to unbreak it's a free body it's kind of necessary i don't think i'd ever play this deck without libic and then on to our extenders obviously we are playing triple copies here of our cog moochinite and then we are playing the one danger snake the one danger jackalope and then our one copy of Psychic Wielder. Ooh. These are the only extenders we chose to play. I was playing Psychic Tracker as well, but I made a small cut just for another blowout powerhouse card that I feel like this deck can kind of main deck. So if you can main deck blowout cards, why would you not? Kagbuja Knight is just extremely good because it just chain blocks your tour guide or it's just a free extender. And then obviously these dangers are insane when you discard them off of your torn scales and Psychic Wielder is just a free body. Yeah, don't forget Kombucha, appreciate your pets and uh, go fast, I guess. Wow, killed it there. No problem, I'm here all week. And then this is where the deck gets kind of funky because it's like, that's the end of the engine. So we're, I guess we're just gonna move on to like the protection cards or like the interaction cards. So we are playing the one copy of Called by the Grave. It's it's just called by, like, why would you not play Called it's by? It's weird because like deck building has gotten so different now. So I feel like deck profiles are gonna start looking really different. Really team. strange. And then we are playing triple copies of Cross Out Designator. Oh boy. And then just because, you know, like once again, it's starting to look weird. It feels super strange to like look up and see this, what we are doing double copies of Ash Blossom, one oh, copy God. of Ghost Bell, one copy of Nibiru, one copy of Effect Veiler, and one copy of Infinite Impermanence. Wow. Uh, deck building, it's super weird. It is very strange. So the reason that we went Or dare with I say, it's spooky. Oh my God, oh Halloween. My God. <laughs> So the reason we went with Double Ash and Bell is because they are level three. So worst case scenario, if you open these and a Cogmucha Knight, you still have full combo because Cherubini is literally just full combo. Nib is one of those cards that kind of just destroys this deck. And then Valor and Imperm aren't really like blowouts, but they do stop the decks. And like, why not play six cards that allow you to go second while also playing, you know, cross out to be able to help you go first and just play through interaction. We've been in this format for five minutes and I already hate the way deck building looks. Yeah, it just feels strange. Like, I, I don't know, we talked about this before we filmed the profile, but like, I'm I'm the kind of person who needs everything organized, so to have like one bell, one nib, one veiler in every deck just feels so strange. Because it's not aesthetically pleasing. And yeah. those of us who like really need that sort of organization, it really makes us feel awful. But yeah. anyway, what is an alternative for folks who do not have designator yet? So as I said before, I am not playing the Psychic Tracker. I think you can play Psychic Tracker and you should also probably be playing the two copies of Emergency Teleport because instead of like playing around hand traps, just play through them. Like literally just play the extenders that allow you to play through them. And if you don't like these six cards for your hand trap ratio, I think you could honestly play like three Ash and you could play three other hand traps as well. The more you know, Moving on. A new addition to the deck, or more like a returning addition to the deck, is the one copy of Shade Brigandine. This is literally just a free extender. It's searchable and it's, you know, an extra body. Welcome back, you ugly gold rare. We missed you. <laughs> and then we are still on triple copies of Fog Blade. This card is insane. It's literally in the gate. It protects you from being attacked. It also makes it so your opponent's monsters can attack. And then it's also reborn in the graveyard because you can banish it and bring back a PK monster. Fog Blade, more like. Hog blade. And then like our powerhouse one ofs, we are obviously on the one copy of Reinforcement of the Army. Whoa. And then the blowout card we were talking about before is Imperial Order. <gasps> oh, but, everyone's favorite card. I know, I know this card is super unfair and it feels really bad when it resolves, but like, if you can afford to play this, I don't understand why you're not. Like, PK is one of those decks where I honestly think it has a lot of flex room. You can play cards like Droplets or anything else, which, you know, if you are interested in the side deck, feel free to check that out. It will be on Patreon in the next few days. But, like, Imperial Order is just an auto-win button, and we play auto-win buttons. Speaking of auto-win buttons... Here's some bricks! 
It's unfortunate, but we are still playing this package. The deck is at 41. I think Imperial Order is honestly one of those cards where it's just worth playing it. I, we've always played 41. I know that everyone likes 40, but like to each their own, 41 is the way that we will continue playing every deck. But like, I think it helps a little bit when you play these three terrible cards in your deck. I also think, as we said at the beginning of the profile, that Phoenix Enforcer is just an insane card for this deck until we get the Brave stuff that the Phoenix Enforcer package is just absolutely fantastic. It's recursion, it's extension, and it's also just another interruption where you don't have to play as many breaks. And don't worry, once we get all the new cards, we will obviously update this deck again. This is kind of just like the buffer deck. Obviously, once Phoenix Enforcer comes out, we're going to be putting Phoenix Enforcer in this deck. So whatever this is, just pretend it's Phoenix Enforcer in like two weeks. Or we can do another profile, whatever you want. This is your world. Moving on for the extra deck, we are playing the one copy of a Link Spider. This is for our Shade Brigadine. And because if we don't open Cross out and we get in the beard, um, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> we still have an effect monster to make everybody's favorite card, Verte Anaconda. This card, oh. honestly, probably should have been banned, but wasn't, and it is what it is. So if uh, Konami is allowing us to have unfair cards, we are going to play unfair cards. Yay, it gets to be degenerate for three more months. Speaking of generic Link 2s, we are playing the one copy of IP. If you know you just happen to open up the Red Eyes Fusion, or you don't feel like Dragoon is a good option going first, IP is always good because you can just get you into a unicorn. We're playing the obvious Cherubini and uh, <laughs> Rusty. I mean, like, I don't think we have to explain yeah. this. <laughs> and speaking of, we are playing the one copy of Unicorn. Yep. And then for our Link 4s, we are on the one copy of Access Code and the one copy of Appaloosa. Appaloosa. Literally just help us blow games out. Bear. And then... Uh, <sighs> This card. It's this douchebag. And then moving on to our Xyz package, we are playing the one copy of Levier, Great Extender, and also just allows you to get some resources back. Perfect card. Double copies of our Break Sword. Break Sword also allows you to get into our copy of Raider Knight, which just allows you to get into our copy of Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon. And oh boy, there's one card left in the extra deck, Chief. What could it be? Broken, unfair cards. I mean, like this deck literally can play Dragoon, Man. it can play Access Code, it can play Zeus. This like... is so nauseating. <laughs> We've ridiculous. got. Dragoon douche, we've got douche goon, we've got access code, Appaloosa, and freaking Sky Daddy. Yeah. What a I mean, fun deck. This is just like one of those decks that has so much utility and so much flexibility. So with all that being said, let's hop over to a test hand and see exactly what we can do. Uh, why have one win come when you can have seven? All right, ghosts and ghouls, we're doing a test hand. For those who don't know, we always do a test hand with every deck profile we do. It feels like it's been a while, but if you want to know how to play the deck, we always do a little tutorial at the end with a random test hand so you guys know how we play the deck. And with that being said, Brian's going to shuffle on up. I'm going to be the opponent and cut, and we're going to show you guys how to get spooky. All right, we'll just do a couple more of these. Make sure we're good and shuffled. All right, here you go. Here I am. Please don't cross out designator me. All right, we are going to start off with... Uh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, that kind of sucks. <laughs> wow! Oh, moments I mean, like, before disaster. Uh, do we even need to do a test hand? Like, we literally wow. just win? He oh, oh my, my god! god. Wow, what a gift. Um, I mean, like, this is honestly kind of just insane. I'm so depressed right now. I can't believe I spoke him into existence. Yo, shout out to consistency. Shout out to me being the best. All right, so we are facing our first decision tree here, which is uh, Normal Summon Tour Guide or Normal Summon Torn Scales. I think because we opened another PK, uh, Normal Summoning Torn Scales is just the best way to go. So, uh <clears throat> so we are just going to start here with our Normal Summon of Torn Scales, activating Torn Scales effect. We are just going to discard our ragged gloves over here. This will Foolish Burial, our Ancient Cloak from our deck to our grave, and we can activate our ragged gloves, banishing it, to send a copy of Fog Blade from our deck to our grave. Now we can activate the Fog Blade, also banishing it, and then special summon back our cloak. Now we're gonna link for two into our Cherubini. We can then activate Cherubini, who will dump a graph from our deck to our grave, and then graph activates, special summoning a copy of Seer. Now we can just link on up into three, for our Rusty Bardiche. Now we can activate our Seer in the graveyard and then just special summon back our Cherubini. Now Rusty will send another copy of Cloak to set a Fog Blade from our deck to our side of the field. And then here we can set our Shade Brigadine and uh, check our graveyard, make sure we don't have any traps, which uh, we don't. And then we're gonna activate our Shade and then special summon it this turn. Now right here we're kinda like forcing our opponents Nibiru if they do have one, which once again we have crossed out so it doesn't really matter all that much. But here um, we have still an Ancient Cloak in our graveyard and we also have a Torn Scales. And this means that like, you know, we have a couple options. So the next play right here is either going to be that for an Appaloosa or we can just make these into a Verte which will a thousand percent get that nib out of our our opponent's hand but what I mean like once again this like 
Cross out's kind of just insane for a deck like this. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to activate the cloak now and banish it to add a copy of Silent Boots from our deck to our hand. And before anyone asks, because I know the comment section is going to wonder, and I'm sure no one will even get this far anyway, but if you do, we got the mat on eBay. <laughs> for the love of God, I can feel the comment section already. We got it on eBay. Anyone yeah. made it this far, timestamp it. eBay. That will just trigger everybody's favorite torn scales over here. And then now we can special summon our boots from our hand. Once again, this is the place to nib, but I mean, it, it just feels so bad. So we'll overlay into our Levier, the Sea Dragon. Then we can activate the Levier, detaching the boots. This will special summon back one of our cloaks. And then remember what we said before, our cloak has an effect. We're going to activate the ancient cloak, target the Rusty, and then put it into defense because now Rusty has an additional 800 attack, is currently at 2900, and is a little bit more difficult for our opponent to get over. Now we're gonna link our cloak and our shade into an IP Mascarena, and then a Levier and our Cherubini into Verte. Now we can activate the Verte Pang 2000, setting Red Eyes Fusion, Dark Magician, and our copy of Red Eyes. This will special summon Dragoon, and then we're not done yet. We can just go ahead now and banish our copy of Silent Boots to grab another Fog Blade. We have IP and Verte, which will become Appaloosa, and we have a Dragoon Negate. You can choose to set the Fog Blade if you would like, or you can choose to use the Fog Blade as your discard for Dragoon, making it an extender in your graveyard as a reborn on your opponent's turn. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually pretty nuts. And it's literally off of 1.5 cards. I think that's pretty crazy. Crossout makes this deck just that much better. I feel like PK has been just tipping on the line of rogue slash meta for a while and i think it's it's really gonna start picking up i think crossout is honestly one of those cards for decks like this where they're like you know kind of a combo deck but also have like that mid-range game yeah. state it just like it lets the combo portion be so much more free and so much less interactive from your opponent and like pk has always really struggled with nibiru and i think this actually gives it like an out to nibiru that yeah. makes it still viable and i i think this is really nice for pk i really enjoy this deck so with that being said that really just does wrap it up for this deck profile and the combo tutorial slash test hand we hope y'all really enjoyed it let us know in the comment section down below what you think of this and or how you're choosing to play your pk deck moving into this current format yeah and if you have any questions about the deck feel free to ask us in the comment section we read all of them heart all of them and i will happily respond or brian will happily respond to any messages you guys have but thank you guys so much for joining us with the first deck profile of boogio we hope you enjoyed it and we hope you're subscribed and stay tuned for the rest of the fun spooky adventures we're gonna go on this month for boogio but we love you you mad and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, team. See ya. Bye. Boom. Uh, I have no costume. Nothing scares me. Oh, ha, 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 ha. You're scary enough. Wow, that's... Okay, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do to that? You know what I'm going to counter that rudeness with? What? Dance.